Hello Pokemon trainers, welcome back to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Battle Stadium singles video here on iStarly TV. This is part of my Road to Master series where I try to climb the online ranked Battle Stadium singles ladder. And today we have a brand new team here, awesome electric terrain team. And this was actually not a team that I built, this is a team that I got from the Smogon forums. So it's from a user on the Smogon forums. They did a full write-up of the team as well as, of course, the team code. So all of that information, or rather the link to their complete write-up of the team will be in the description. So check that out if you want more information about the team, as well as the EV spreads and everything like that. That'll all be there. So we can, yeah, take a look here. This is a really cool team and it looks like they did pretty well with it. Of course, the focus of the team is Maridon as the restricted legend and Maridon does a good job of setting up, elect well, it, it, it sets up electric terrain. I, I mean, I guess you could say it does a good job because that's, you know, it's the only, it's one of the only Pokemon that does it. But anyways, uh, they have three, at least three Pokemon that can really take advantage of the electric terrain, either with Cork Drive as their ability, or of course, Sneasler with Electric Seed and Unburden. Uh, but let's talk about some of the unconventional choices. Now, again, this is kind of coming from having read their write up and, and everything like that. So, you know, I'm probably not privy to like all of the nuances to all of these Pokemon, but either way, you'll probably notice a couple of Pokemon that stand out, which are the Iron Boulder and Orthworm, mainly because those are two Pokemon that you really just don't ever see in Battle Stadium singles, but they look like they're really strong on this team. Look, look, look like they have a good, a good, uh, I don't know, shot at doing well. Uh, Iron Boulder here is Choice Banded. It's gonna hit really, really hard. And of course it gets the, I believe it gets a speed boost with the electric train cork drive. So that helps it obviously against some of the faster threats in the meta. Mighty Cleave is actually a really strong move and Rock is a pretty good typing as well. And of course the rest of its moves are for coverage and they offer really, really good coverage. These four moves that Iron Boulder has, they, they cover things, they cover like most everything in the meta really well. Of course, it also has a stellar Terra type just to boost the damage from the moves that it's going to be using. Uh, and then let's go to Orthworm. I know I'm jumping around here, but <laughs> Orthworm is a really interesting choice. Of course, its ability Earth Eater means that it's immune to ground. And there's a good amount of solid ground types in the meta right now, or at least Pokemon that run ground type moves for coverage. Of course, Landorus and maybe Ting Lu are probably some of the more prevalent Pokemon that use ground type moves and you know just being immune to a move that they would probably go for. I know in the in their write-up the the per person who made this team said that a lot of people tend to forget about Earth Eater even people in Master Ball rank so it's like and I've, I've had experiences like that as well where you have an ability that makes you immune to a certain type and even if you Terrasilize people will still be trying to hit you with like moves that they think are going to work and, and they completely forget that you're immune to it. So Orthworm is extremely tanky from the physical side so once we Terrastalize we can kind of survive hits from a lot of things in the meta. A lot of physical attackers of course. And it has the move Shed, Sh or, sorry, Shed Tail which is a move that you know, it's new in Gen 9. It hasn't gotten too much love, maybe at the very beginning of, of Scarlet and Violet singles, but what it does is it cuts 50% of your HP um, and it baton passes a substitute to the enemy. So it's kind of like baton pass and substitute, but it baton passes the substitute to the enemy. I mean, it's not like baton pass, it doesn't pass any boosts, but you know, passing a substitute is really strong and Orthworm is pretty slow as well. So that allows you to go second. So you can like survive a hit from something, go for Shed Tail, and then switch into something behind a substitute, which is extremely strong. Um, and then we'll just kind of go back to the top here. Out of, we're going all over the place. Um, right on here, I think they EV'd it, I believe to outspeed uh, Ogre Pond, they said. It's a little bit tankier and it does have Terrain Extender, which of course extends the duration of the electric terrain, which can help a lot of the members of our team. And it, it's got Calm Mind and Agility as well, so it's there to set up, but it also has really good stab as well. And, I mean, Maridon's a really strong Pokemon, you know, I think Coridon gets a lot of the love these days in singles, but Maridon is right up there in power level. Then we've got Sneasler, pretty self-explanatory, you know, Sneasler has Unburden, you know, it has Electric Seed. So once it consumes the Electric Seed, it's going to be faster than pretty much everything in the entire meta, and it hits pretty hard as well. It's got great coverage, great moves and Terra Ghost to both boost the power of Shadow Claw. I mean, there's a lot of strong Ghost-type Pokemon in this meta, but also to make it immune to 
uh, normal type attacks, so like extreme speed and quick attack from some of the common Pokemon. Uh, then we have an interesting Ursa Luna set, at least one that not, or at least not one that I've seen super often. But it's a bulky Ursa Luna with max HP and max special defense with the Moranga Berry. And what that does is when you get hit with a special attack, you consume the Moranga Berry and you get a special attack boost. Or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, a special defense boost. So it makes you really, really tanky. And so between Orthworm and Ursa Luna, you have uh, physical attackers covered with Orthworm and special attackers covered with Ursa Luna, so that's a really good core right there. Finally, there's Focus Sash Iron Bundle. Iron Bundle is a Pokemon I, I have always loved in singles. I think it's always been really good, and of course, taking advantage of the electric terrain with Quark Drive is really nice, and this one has a few tricks up its sleeve with Encore and Whirlpool. Um, often, all you really need is Hydro Pump, Hydro Pump and Freeze Dry, so kind of filling that uh, those last two slots with other moves to help you is pretty nice. So there's the team. Definitely try it out for yourself, and of course, once again, definitely make sure to check the description for the link to the full write-up on the Smogon forums, where they will do a great job of explaining this team a lot better than I can. And it, that'll also have the importable, uh, you know, text for all of the EV spreads for these Pokemon. So, let's get to this in game, see how it does. We have a game number one, and we have a Coridon team with a lot of standard Pokemon, a lot of really strong Pokemon here. Um, yeah, I'm, what am I going to lead with? Orthworm seems like a decent lead. I do like Maridon here. Maridon seems actually pretty solid against a lot of their Pokemon, although uh, Tyranitar is scary. Is there ever a world where I lead with Maridon. Um, I mean, honestly, I kind of like a lot of the Pokemon on my team against theirs. It's kind of like their team is pretty, I guess you could say, balanced, and so is mine. So, like, I don't know. It feels like anything could, could have value in this matchup. Um, they do have a lot of physical attackers, which leads me to believe that Orthworm could be a pretty nice one to bring. I'm not sure I'd want to lead with it, though. And then if I'm bringing Orthworm, I mean, they have Fluttermane, but what, what would I bring to help help me against Fluttermane? Fluttermane's, I mean, needless to say, Fluttermane is scary. I think I want to bring Orthworm, Sneasler, and Maridon. I'm not sure this is the best order, though. Like, it could be that I would rather lead with Maridon, but... I've said this before, in this meta, I'm always hesitant to ever lead with my Restricted Legends. Like, I, I always tend to bring them in the back, because I just feel like, you know, if I lead with them, then if I get a, a bad matchup, then I have to switch them out, and it just puts me on the back foot. Or if my opponent knocks out my Restricted Legend early, then, you know, I lose my most powerful Pokemon early. I don't know, there are cases where that could, you know, help, or, or where you could afford to do that, but... They have Shiny Orthworm too, which I like. I, I have a Shiny Orthworm as well, I've just never found a use for it. Now, of course, uh, Chan Pao could very well have Sacred Sword. The fact that they led with it leads me to believe that they could have Focus Sash as well. Um, I think I'm just going to go Body Press right off the bat. I don't think I lose too much by doing this. You know, if they Terra, that's just fine early in the game. If they switch to Fluttermane, you know, it, it gives me at least more information about their team. Um, if they stay in and, you know don't Sacred Sword, which of course they do, um, then I can, you know, kill them for free, but yeah. This is, they are, yeah, I was gonna say they are dead if they don't have the Focus Sash, but of course, why wouldn't they have the Focus Sash? Um, we have Metal Burst as well. I think we just stay in? They're probably going Sacred Sword again. I mean, I could switch in Sneasler to resist that, but then they're faster than me. The, the following turn, and it's it's like, you know, it just kind of feels like I'm taking needless damage. So I'm just going to go Body Press, even though it's probably the most obvious uh, move. Yeah, like I said, I kind of expected this. I kind of figured this could happen. But if they go into Fluttermane, or they go Coridon, that is terrifying. Okay, they go Coridon right off the bat. Oh, I do get the Body Press, of course. Yeah, that that's something. It's, it's some damage. Uh, if they're max speed, though, if they're max speed Jolly, they will be faster than Maridon, which is terrifying. Um, I don't think there's a world where I could ever... 
um, switch out right now. Yeah, I'm gonna... Okay, they go Flame Charge. Oh, and I survive it. Oh, but this is actually really bad because I just went Shed Tail. Oh, but I have Citrus, huh? Yeah, I was just thinking like either they kill me or if they go for Swords Dance or something, I could Baton Pass or, or pass a sub. Yikes. Yeah, that's really, really bad. I also considered going for Metal Burst, which would have done pretty good damage there. But now they get to kill me for free. For what it's worth... Um... What am I trying to say? For what it's worth, I forgot what I was gonna say. I was I was too busy thinking ahead to the to the next turn. Uh, I have to go Maride on here. Unfortunately, I do not have um, Volt Switch because that would be decent here. I think I'm gonna have to Terastalize, and then I'm gonna go Pulse. Or do I just agility? Well, they're at plus two speed, so even if I agility, I'm probably still slower than them. I'm going to Terrasilize and Dragon Pulse here. Um, of course, if they hit me with a Fire-type move while I'm a Fairy-type, that's going to do massive damage, probably kill me. But um, I think it's pretty unlikely they do that. They're probably going to go either for a Dragon move or a Fighting move. And of course, by going Terra Fairy here, I get to resist or be immune to those. So that's pretty good for me. Um, unless they make a crazy prediction here, but I don't know if that's worth it. They are terrestrializing too. I, I figure they might do this. I considered going for electric train, but or electro drift, but I just don't want to over predict at this point. Yeah, they go they go terra fire. You know what? It's possible they just go flare blitz here. Like maybe they figure like even if I don't terrestrialize, they're still gonna do a lot of damage to me. But we'll see what happens. If they do go flare blitz here and kill me, they are gonna take a lot of recoil. So then I can go into sneezler. Well, actually, I'm not even sure that I survive or, or th that I outspeed them now that they have those two f uh, flame charge boosts. They go collision course. Nice. Okay, cool. That's what I was hoping for, of course. <laughs> um, I mean, I have to hope to kill them here, but I I'm not sure I'm going to. But like I said, I mean, their best move to hit me now is going to be probably Flare Blitz. Well, I guess they could go Flame Charge, and honestly, Flame Charge might even kill me. Yeah, they Flare Blitz. So this works out really well because it actually knocks them out as well. Um, with the recoil. And then their Chen Pao is kind of as good as dead. I mean, it's at like 1 HP. And then whatever else they have, um, Sneasler should outspeed thanks to the Unburden. So Sneasler looks like it's in a pretty solid position here. Of course, my opponent also Terastalized already, so they cannot Terastalize. So basically, like, we're playing at face value, if that makes sense. Like, if they go Ogre Pond, I can go Dire Claw and not worry about... Okay, well, they go Scizor. That's kind of scary, actually. Um, I mean... I get a Defense Boost. Plus, my typing is really good against Scizor. I mean, the problem is if they have... Um, the problem is if they have... Oh, uh, what do I do? If they have a uh, Dual Wing Beat. Like, if they're Choice Banded Scizor with Dual Wing Beat, I probably just lose here. I'm gonna Shadow Claw. Maybe I get a crit. I'm I'm not gonna. Ah, that does nothing. They do have the Wing Beat, and we're dead. Wow. Are they banded? They took that Shadow Claw really well. So I mean, I would have lost no matter what there because even if I had gone close combat, close combat would not have killed them. It would have done a lot more damage. Other Life Orb. They must have some investment in either HP or defense because they took. Well, I mean, Scissor typically does right, but. Yeah, they took that hit really, really well. I mean, the reason I didn't go close combat there was because I I knew it wouldn't kill. And I feel like I would, I mean, I would be lowering my defense for nothing at that point and they would just kill me, right? So I, I wanted to save the close combat. I mean, at that point, knowing knowing how it played out, knowing the fact that they had dual wing beat and they killed me in one hit no matter what, it doesn't matter what I went for there because I considered going for swords dance as well, but... I mean, I think Wing Beat is probably pretty standard on Scizor at this point. It makes a lot of sense. But unfortunately, that's a loss. I mean, I guess, you know, I was I was trying to think of their team. I forgot about Scizor. I was thinking of Tyranitar, Ogre Pond, and Fluttermane. And I was thinking to myself, like, oh, uh, Sneasler has a great matchup against all of those. But the one Pokemon that it didn't uh, is the one that they had. So let's go to game two. All right. You know, we saw the best. Restricted Legend in the first game, and this game we're getting the second best. Uh, Calyrex is also absolutely terrifying. 
And I think once again, well, here's the thing. And, and my opponent, you know, they're playing Rillaboom, which makes a lot of sense because Rillaboom kind of counters, not counters, but I mean, a, a big reason to bring Rillaboom is because of grassy terrain. So you can cancel out uh, Maridon's electric terrain, which is, you know, kind of what they're going for here. So, I mean, I want to bring Maridon. Do I just lead Orthworm again? They do have a lot of physical attackers once again. So I could lead with Orthworm, although of course they do have, well, they have their two ghosts, right? So I like Orthworm and I also like Ursa Luna here. Although ugh, the problem with Ursa Luna is that it's actually, it's, it's great against their ghosts, but then almost everything else on their team, it's really bad against. So we really need something to balance this out. And you know, Sneasler also, it feels like a good Pokemon to kind of balance that out, but but I it, it needs electric terrain. I think I have to bring, I don't know, this is kind of rough. We're going to see how this plays out. Maybe I shouldn't have brought both Orthworm and Ursaluna, but, or maybe I should have led with Maridon? I don't know. I keep saying this, but this meta is, has been a, a struggle for me. Like, I just, it's just been difficult to kind of really feel like I can understand it really well. Um, they lead Fluttermane, which is, of course, you know, the best Pokemon to match up against Orthworm. But luckily, I can just go right into um, Ursaluna. So, go into Ursaluna here. Like I said, pretty much my opponent's whole team is or all their physical attackers are really good against Ursaluna. But if they brought Fluttermane and Calyrex, they go Taunt. Okay, that's fine. If they brought Fluttermane and Calyrex, you know, Ursaluna is good against two-thirds of their team, which I think it's pretty likely they brought Calyrex. Now I wonder, do I ever go Earth Power here? I mean, I, Blood Moon is like the kind of obvious move that I'm probably going for. I mean, Earth Power is only good against Incineroar. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna click Blood Moon. Of course, I'm taunted, so I cannot start setting up. Maybe they, maybe they don't know that I, or they're not gonna expect me to be bulky, so they're just gonna, oh, yeah, they just go for a move. Oh, but they miss, wow. <laughs> okay, that's funny. All right, maybe they'll go for Icy Wind again. That would actually be nice. That does a lot of damage. Of course, I have no investment in special attack, but Ursaluna already has a really naturally high uh, special attack stat. Go Icy Wind, and that's gonna give me that special defense boost. Um, and it's, it's going to drop my speed, which I don't think really matters here. I mean, I think Ursaluna's speed is similar to Incineroar, so maybe that could matter, but... We're going to knock out Fluttermane. That's a pretty good start for us. If they have Calyrex in the back, they're definitely not going into it right now. I shook off the taunt for what it's worth, but like I said, a lot of their team is good against, uh, yeah, they go Chen Pao, okay. Hmm. This is going to be a tougher one. It, I mean, it definitely sucks to have to switch out. Do I just stay in? Or... Hmm. They're going to go for an ice type move. I mean, they could also go Sacred Sword. I think I go Orthworm here. Yeah, I just I, there's no world where I should stay. I mean, I could stay in. I, I probably wouldn't survive a hit. I could have Terrastalized. I have a lot of options there. Luckily for me, they go Icicle Crash rather than Sacred Sword. And of course, you know, going off of the first battle, I know that I survive a Sacred Sword. I guess unless they're like Choice Bandit or Life Orb. Um, is there ever a world where I'd shed tail? No, I don't want to. That's a, that's a challenge with this Orthworm is just knowing when to shed tail. Cause you know, Orthworm has massive H or sorry, massive defense, but it's HP stat is really not that high. Okay. If they have sash. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, cool. Well, we're in a good spot here now. The problem is, and this is the terrifying part. If their last Pokemon is Calyrex, like I said, you know, I have Ursaluna in the back. The problem is, if they, like, I have to play smartly. Yeah, of course it is Calyrex here. 
Because if my Orthworm gets knocked out, like, I, basically, I cannot let them get that. I cannot, I cannot let them get a knockout because they just snowball at that point. Um, yeah, that's tough. I, I think I go back into Ursaluna here. I mean, I have a massive advantage. I'm at, I'm at three to one here, but against a Calyrex, it almost doesn't matter. Like Orthworm's basically as good as dead against a Calyrex because they can just one hit KO me with their Astral Barrage. Um, you know, Maridon, I think also probably doesn't survive a hit from them. They're gonna Terra right away. If they're Terra fighting. That's it. That's it, really. Okay, Terra Fairy. Okay. What are they going for here? I wonder why they went Terra Fairy, though. Oh, wow. I'm surprised they went for Barrage. That gives me... That gave me a free switch. Okay, here I'm just gonna Moonlight just to kind of see what happens. So I'm immune to their strongest move. There's... I'm never gonna Terrastalize here. Because they probably have Psychic. And I'm a Terra Poison. Let's see how much this does. It does a lot, okay. Oh, but they're life orb. Okay, well that's why it does a lot. So now, I don't know if we can ever... Do they have nasty plot? Man. They're going Terra Blast. I'm gonna moonlight again. I'm just so scared. If they have nasty plot, it's over. Okay, they, they I don't think they have it. So they have Terra Blast, they have Astral Barrage, they probably have Psychic. Wow, that does so much damage. My my kind of plan here is to kind of like stall long enough that I can go for um Blood Moon to finish them off. Because there's never a world at this point where I can calm mind. They protect. What? That is a weird one. Why would they protect? Maybe they expected me to Blood Moon there? I mean, I'm kind of tempted to calm mine now. <laughs> I, I I need to be paying more attention to how much damage these... Uh, these uh, Terra Blasts are doing to me. Because that could allow me to p possibly calm mind. I, no, I don't think I ever calm mine. I think it's too big of a... Ri Ooh, well... It does less than half. So, if it does the same amount of damage, it does about 100 damage. About. So, if... It's possible I could calm mind. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to Moonlight again. What? Oh, I guess they're trying to stall me out now. Well, at that point, if, if it's doing less than half, let's just Blood Moon now then, right? Rather than com ra rather than worry about Calm Mining, because it's possible I kill them here. I don't think so, but you never know, right? Okay, yeah. So we got him. We got him. I think we win now. It's a little bit of a prediction game, but I had the upper... Oh, I got a crit. I, I don't think it mattered. I think I was winning. I, I was winning this game unless they got a crit. So, like, either they get a crit... Like, and win the game or anything else. Like, I, I win the game any other way, basically. Um, so it didn't matter that I got a crit. Because even if I didn't get a crit and, and my Blood Moon does not kill them there, um, you know, they go for Terra Blast and, you know, they don't kill me unless they get a crit. And then and then we go from, like, a Earth Power the next turn or something and then that kills them. Um, I mean, if they got a crit, it wouldn't kill me that turn, but it would obviously, it would do more than half at that point. And since they're faster, then they would just kill me the following turn. But basically, they they needed a crit to win. That's the only way they could have won. Um, and even though I had two other Pokemon left, like, I mean, Calyrex just wins the game. Like, Calyrex is a stupid Pokemon. Calyrex and Coridon are both just really, really, really strong. It's terrifying. Uh, but anyways, we got the W there. You know, a little bit of a slow finish to that one, but it was still fun. So let's go to game three. Okay, my opponent does not have a restricted legend. Uh, they have a lot of special attackers, which leads me to believe that Ursaluna looks pretty strong here. Probably don't want to lead with it, though. Of course, even though my opponent doesn't have any restricted legends, you know, I shouldn't I shouldn't assume that I'm automatically going to win this game, because you never know with this stuff. Uh, Sneasler looks pretty strong, but again, with Sneasler, you definitely want to bring Maridon, so... Their, their potential leads are... I mean, honestly, almost anything on their team could lead. Uh, 
Glimora and Artiludon are probably the most likely, but I've seen Superior as well. Superior could be a good lead. If you just fire off that Leaf Storm right away and get a kill, you just snowball pretty easily. Um, I don't think I like Ur Orthworm though, but of course I do like Ursaluna. Uh, Bundle could be good because it has Sash. Or do I just go Maridon and... S I probably just go Maridon Sneasler as well. The question is, what do I lead with? And it's probably Maridon. We'll see how that goes, how that plays. If they lead Glimora, that's a good lead for me. I just go Electro Drift and do massive damage. And I mean, I guess they could go like Earth Power or Mud Shot. If they lead Arch. If they lead Arch, that's potentially scary. They do, of course, lead Arch. Okay. Hmm. They're probably going to go for a dragon move. Think about Arch. Arch is a good Pokemon too. It's so versatile. I think I'm just going to fire off a, a dragon pulse here. If they go for a dragon move, I mean, even if they kill me here, I I don't want them to set up Stealth Rock, but also like, I don't want them to really set anything up. So like by, by just pressuring them right away, I think that that works in my favor, even if they happen to like kill my Maridon here. And it is a little bit of a prediction game too, because they don't know if I'm going to, if I'm going to be afraid of them and switch out or if I'm going to you know, Terrasalize, or if I'm gonna, you know, do this or that, like, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, they eat a berry, but, oh, yeah, that's that's fine. Okay, they go rocks, perfect. Uh, this thing usually, well, never mind, duh, they just use their item. I was gonna say, this thing usually has Custat Berry, but obviously they do not. And even if they did, they are not low enough for Custat, so we just get to kill them here. Get a free kill turn one. I mean, it's not free, they got up rocks, but rocks are also not that scary. I mean, my last two Pokemon resist it, so we're not too worried about the rocks. It sucks to take that little little bit of damage, but it's not a big deal. And Maridon is pretty well positioned against their whole team at this point, I think. Ursa Luna. Okay, well, except for that, I would say. <laughs> uh, what do we do here? I could Calm Mind, or do I just go right into Sneasler? What are they going to do? I'm going to calm mine just to kind of scout and, and kind of scare them a little. Like, you know, if they have a setup move, I might scare them into attacking me. Well, if they if they have calm mind as well, this is going to be a big problem. They go earth power. Okay. Okay, we do survive that. I'm just going to fire off the dragon pulse now. At this point, I don't really mind if Kari uh, Maridon dies. Because I, I really just kind of want to go into Sneasler for free at some point. So get off some damage here. A lot of damage. Nice. Okay. And now the question is... The problem is... Will they Terrastalize? Because if they go like Terra Ghost here and I go close combat, obviously that's a big problem. I think I might just go Dire Claw. Because, of course, the other thing is if I go Shadow Claw, predicting them to Terrastalize and they don't Terrastalize, you know, that's another huge problem. Look how small it is compared to Ursa Luna. I mean, the thing is, I don't know if Dire Claw kills. This is actually really scary. What would they go for here? Probably Blood Moon, but would they Terrastalize? I think they're typically Terra Normal. Famous last words. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. I almost over predict. See, I do that so much. I sometimes just over predict and I almost went for like Dire Claw right there. And I do, I do these plays where I'm thinking so far ahead and I'm making these wild predictions. And then when they don't happen, it looks like such a stupid play. Cause I almost clicked Dire Claw and there was a chance that they don't die to that. Um, now they go Sir Perrier. This is very, very scary, but I think I'm in a good spot here. Uh, I'm just gonna Dire Claw. Of course, they could Terrastalize, but Dire Claw also has a chance to like poison or paralyze or put them to sleep. And if they don't Terrastalize, we just kill them, right? <laughs> GG's. Yeah, that was a that was an interesting one. I mean, their team was still scary. Like I said, even if they even though they did not have a restricted legend, they they had some really really strong scary Pokemon that are individually really good. Sadly, I don't think Goldango's that great anymore. Like I think Goldango's one Pokemon that has really suffered with this new meta because. Um, it's it just gets obliterated by Fluttermane, gets obliterated by Calyrex, um, also gets obliterated by other strong restricted legends like Coridon and Ho-Oh, who have, who have fire uh, strong fire moves. <laughs> so yeah, 
Let's take another look at the team then, because that's it for games today. Um, let me know what you think in the comments, of course, as I always say. Um, let me see if I can... Yeah, there we go. So yeah, here is the team. Let me talk about it. Of course, once again, I will always defer to the person who made the team. They know better than I do, and they understand it better than I do. So if there's ever points in the in the video where I'm like saying like, oh, I wish this would have been the case. I wish it would have this move, or you know, oh, I don't get why that it has this EVs. Of course, you know, I know less than the person who made this team. Um, but I liked this team a lot. I liked it. Um, it felt like all of the Pokemon had you know good balance. Like. Um, of course, I, I never really used Boulder or Bundle, but I could see their uses. Like, Iron Boulder looks really, really strong, and I, I really want to try it out uh, even more. And, of course, I've used plenty of Iron Bundle in the past, so I know how good that is. But Orthworm was great. I like it a lot. I mean, Ursa Luna was also great. I'm probably going to try out this Ursa Luna set myself in the future, just because it, it is really good in this meta. Like, you know, two of the strongest Pokemon in the entire meta are, are these really strong special attacking ghost types. So having a Pokemon that's immune to that and also has good special bulk is just a great place to be. And Maridon also looked really good there. Uh, Maridon plus Sneasler was also nice. And I really like the Sneasler. Now something that I noticed in this in this team that was an issue, but also, I mean, I've, I've used things like this in the past where they've been issues, but... Having Pokemon with the with the seed items, um, those are really strong items, especially with Pokemon that have Unburden. But it opens up the problem where you know sometimes you want to bring that Pokemon, but then you don't want to bring the Terrain Setter. So, you know, I've I've done it in the past again with uh, you know Rillaboom and other Pokemon that summon Terrain, and I have a Pokemon with like seed, Grassy Seed or Electric Seed or whatever. And it feels awkward sometimes because it's like, oh, you know, I want to bring the Pokemon with the seed, but I'm not going to get the benefit of it because I won't have the terrain. So, I mean, I think it's still worth it. And maybe it's just the case that anytime you want to bring Maridon, you do want to bring Sneasler. But that's why it's cool to have some self-sufficient Pokemon like Rillaboom who holds, like Rillaboom holding Grassy Seed is nice because you're always going to have gra Grassy Terrain. So you're always going to get that Grassy Seed boost. Same with Maridon. I've seen um, in, the, in the usage statistics, one of the most common items for Maridon is actually Electric Seed. So Maridon itself can hold Electric Seed. And maybe like Electric Seed with Calm Mind, that could be really good because you could, you know, boost both of your defenses. So that's pretty strong. But either way, Maridon's awesome. Sneedler's awesome. Orthworm's great. Ursaluna's awesome. You know, great stuff. Love the team. Uh, definitely try it out for yourself. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to play more games with it as well just to help me get to Master Ball since the, the season's almost over, the month is almost over. But yeah, let me know in the comments what you thought. Please leave a like and subscribe for more Pokemon Scarlet and Violet videos. And of course, you know, try out the team for yourself and let me know in the comments how it goes. Of course, you know, if you have a Smogon account as well, you can um, comment to the person who made this team if you try out the team and let them know how it went and let them know that I sent you. So have a great day, everyone. Take care. We'll see you next time.